All right, uh, we finished drilling our tap size hole for those two bolts, uh, bolt holes, so that we'll be able to tighten down a retainer cap. And I went over on the mill. We got two hold down bolts that we're going to use to go ahead and put in here to hold this down to the table. And of course, you want to make sure you're not bottoming out here. You make sure that you're going to have enough crimping power and everything else. So what I came up with was. Uh, one and three quarter from the bottom of there will be our our that's where we want both both the hubs will be done the same um, we're going to be tightening these in of course this one here is shallow it's not too important we'll be able to reach it uh, but we're going to have to run down in a little deeper on our larger one so we want just clearance in here so we're just going to go ahead and comfortably give ourselves three quarters of an inch so we're going to drill three quarters of an inch down to about an inch and a half and then clearance for the half inch bolt the remainder of the inch and three quarters down here the dimensions are not important I'm just telling you that we're going to go partial down for clearance and partial for the clearance of the the uh, the bolt thread itself and that's how we're going to retain these down and uh, and have this slug located on the mill table all right we have our stop set or our scale set to let us know when uh, we're going to be deep enough with this. Alright, now we'll go ahead, index around. change out to our clearance hole at the bottom and uh, I'm going to get something my little cheater tube here here just for a little bit there we go all right and a little bit for the start of the thread okay all of that looks good Tap follower. And uh, I'm going to use a half inch three flute plug tap. High speeds, not coated or anything, nothing fancy about it. Except for it's sharp and it's, and it's the one we have. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to lower down my head here until I get a good. pressure on the point there and 
another little dab of goo here Luma tap once we're good and lined up I'm not worried about following down all the way through it's not a technical hole it's just gonna hold a bolt it's gonna hold a plate down and feels like we're down close to the bottom it's gonna be enough threads anyway juice there bring down our spindle or quill whichever you prefer clean blue all that blew out all that debris on that side and we kind of wiped it down <laughs> and uh, we stuck our uh, our drill in here that we went down through the bottom and what we're doing is we're just coming down um, coming down here and with this loose and we're gonna we're gonna call that a lining right there and just rough you know all we're doing is going ahead and we're going to chamfer this end or this side of the hole so that that surface right there doesn't set up on the uh, mill table when we're trying to set this thing up all right <clears throat> the first part is complete ready to go test bolt it down to the table and see how our part fits on there actually I see a little bit of chips down in here and we're probably going to loosen those up and blow those out just so we don't have any chips in there <clears throat> I don't have to peel this off but some of this time flying around and you go to get into the can and put some brush on here. Um, you just tend to catch your brush, catch your hand or something. You don't want to take a chance. All right, we're we're using a three-quarter inch paper chain drill bit here because we need the length for our uh, relief before we get to the the out the bolt hole for the Allen. head cleared off of here and both of our pieces are fully machined and both of them are deburred on the bottom and uh, we're ready to go. I just put uh, 
two uh, T-nuts that were holding the dividing head down. I just moved them both over to the slot, kind of got them in this area here. Um, we're going we're gonna to give something up while we're doing all this. I go, you know, why, why can't we do this entire job uh, right here in this uh, vintage uh, drilling machine here? And I'm going to go ahead and kind of eyeball these and we're going to... I'm going to go ahead and tie this in here. I think that one's got to be poked in a little bit. Let's see. Okay, we're just going to go out here close to the edge so that we're not exceeding that. We just want to just, just to see uh, see where we might be in and up here. And if we can hold these things in here. This, is, this jig is going to give us the straight line with the spindle. And... Uh, we can we can do a lot with tooling on small holes like what we're working with and uh, we haven't made our top plate yet but we just kind of wanted to see what things are going to look like here so let me grab one of our frames down here and uh, I know we did number them just of our curiosity uh, spiderweb's gone okay uh, number four and this is our upper one here I mean, our L shape, the the block here we made so that we'd have clearance here, and we're just hoping everything pays out okay. We may have to polish a little off of there. Let's do that. I want to work them that tight anyway. You know, there, well, there is a couple, couple corrosion spots right there, um, and here. So, um, let's take our, our flat wheel and go through that bore once, uh, because I, I did, I, you saw me, I slipped one of those on there, so I just grabbed another one. The other, the one we tried is in another spot there. Uh, I'll just set that down. Okay, this is number two one. Same thing. I'm just going to try it on the other side just to double check it. And both, all these bullers are, are really dirty. Okay, that other side seems to be a little bit more open. Alright, but it's not sliding on there like I'd like it to be. Alright, let's clean some bores and we'll get back to it. This is pretty much just polishing the bore. Not even taking all the stain out of it. But it's taking that, there's like a, there was a, like a little rust built up, corrosion on there. This little <laughs> little pneumatic tool there is about ready to be replaced, and uh, I'm gonna miss it. I think I picked this up almost 20 something years ago. I actually machined a second set of veins that go in there, and a couple new bearings. All right, now we'll see how we're doing. You know, dimensions and everything else were were feel good about it. And that other one fit, and it might have just been a cleaner one. I 
one little one little spot right there. Right there. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, this is this is the worst one here. I think this is the this is the one that he actually sent us, uh, and we looked at before. We looked at all the rest of them, and this one here is almost worn all the way out. One side there. almost the thickness of the o-ring. All right, we came into the plasma table here and we quickly drew out a circle with two holes in it to be the hold down plate for our mat track uh, uh, jig here. And we're getting ready to cut this out. Let's get some uh, ventilation here. All right, here we go. Deburred our plate we just cut out on the plasma cutter and looks like our holes are doing pretty good there. I just figured how close it was uh, to the edge there. Quarter inch steel plate would be fine and I had the material on the plasma cam and it makes it pretty easy and and uh, Oh, that that is nice and rigid right there. All right, that's that's what I was looking for. It's a it you know a little bit to make the support, but it's holding it perfectly level. Now I can get a little uh, adjustable parallel, slip it underneath here, and a toe clamp, and I'll be able to support these uh, just fine. And I can loosen this up, and we can rotate this around. So that we're comfortable in the position of our table here and be able to zero in on each one of them all right so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and investigate what i got for uh, a support under here i mean this could be even even something as simple as the aluminum and a pair of machinist wedges and then toe clamping which sometimes you have a little bit of spring action and everything else into that uh, uh, we'll take a look at what we got and what's going to work best for us and we'll be able to swing and do this one here and then we'll be able to swing this around and we'll be able to do that side as well and what we're going to do is take and create round true bores with the original bore and we're going to use the o-ring groove as the gauge for that position we also know from hole to hole, they're about an inch and an eighth. Uh, what did I say? Oh, excuse me. They were uh, two and an eighth um, from each other, and that that was measuring two or three of them together, and I was able to come up with that dimension right there. All right, I'm getting ready to stress-free mount this, and and brought an indicator in here and just set it on the on the table. Um, there is no need to really set the indicator uh, for zero, but we're just going to kind of look at its, in it, at its movement here. Now this plate is loose. I haven't bolted this down. Now this is a slip fit, but out in this distance out from here, well, you know, if this has got a thou or two thousandths uh, per its four inches, and then you take that and you multiply that on out here, um, actually in the two inches of height here, so you got two fourths on out here. Um, so this is hanging down now, and if I pull it up, you can see that you can get 
depending on how you rock it on here. You can get about 20 plus uh, thousandths of travel right there. Now, that's about the realm that we're going to go ahead and, and work this, uh, the two, two bores here. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the two clamping bolts on the, the main support here. And you see that that travel dial came on up and it's rigid and now just a flex of uh, the whole framework here I can only get a couple thousands now you know we may be able to do some machine work without that moving around but I'm going to add a toe clamp onto that and the way I do that get over the side here and move a few things here and coffee gets spilt if you leave it on your job site here all right um what I like to do is, and we can go ahead and set this at zero. I guess that was pretty close to zero. Got a piece of aluminum, and we're going to use this ear right here to toe clamp on. And we got two wedges here that we put in opposite directions. And uh, we can preload about a thousand of an inch of travel there. And uh, put the clamp underneath here. And we can do a little bit of back and forth. We can actually clamp that down about five, but we can loosen that, preload that about five, and tighten that down to zero. And we can leave it right there. Are we happy with that tension and that motion? I think so. All right, now we know that this thing is rock solid and it's not gonna move. It's supporting underneath and it's in stress-free position. Everything is square and our spindle is dialed into our table so we're going to be taking it a two fluid end mill and we have two of them that are roughly the diameter of the o-ring groove which is enough to give us straight line bores in the original position. So basically this setup here is just so that we can get true straight holes going through these two holes and the other two on the other side of the the aluminum casting here. Alright, what I've done here is turned a piece of uh, 12L14 just so it's easy machining. Uh, 3 quarter inch shank and then a diameter on the end here uh, 830 thousandths which gives us that diameter of those o-ring grooves and I've checked it with almost all of them and it's going to give me a good visual lineup on that. So I'm going to be happy with my capabilities of zeroing in where that original hole is on all these. And just a light tension there. And we bring down our spindle here. And just as soon as that slips down in there. And we can also eyeball on all four sides here. Just four pointing it. Just in case. I mean, these aren't bad. But these over here, a couple of these are real, real close to the edge. And this might actually be a little bit mushroomed. But you have the whole diameter to look at all the way around this. And it gives you a good visual. And that's about, oh, I don't know, 40, 50 thousandths deep. It has a little mushroom right there. But the flat end of that does protrude down into that bore. And gives you a good visual lineup on that. All right, we got our uh, two fluid end mill here, and this is uh, a 13 16 end mill, and uh, it it we've done the four point eyeball with it as well, and we're still locked down great. Table's locked, all the good things there. So um, I think yeah, uh, that good thing. I was double checking, double check the depth and how far we got our bit sitting out here two and three eighths and we're about two and a half there that'd be good All right. it, it is nice to have that tight in the collet nasty things happen to collets when you spin them all right we're gonna lock uh we're locking our manual feed in and we're gonna manual feed this in here find out um, what kind of a cut we get. Area is clear. Uh, a little
Alumatap just in case uh, just in case we think we need it. Alright, here we go. Now this is just to create a round hole. This should make a hole at least a minimum of 812,000 and the finished hole will be 7 8 it could be 875 plus or minus a thou. The one set of bearings that we mic'd up was about 2,000s on the heavy side and we may order a reamer to be 1,000s under that. Uh, we're investigating on a supply for our bearings other than the catalog, but we may have to result to uh, purchasing them from McMaster Car or one other company. There is clearance around this upper shank of the cutter. The cutter is actually wider than the shank. Most of the chips is falling out through the center of the bore. A little bit of clogging going on there. Okay, we are all the way through with our first hole. Alright, we're going to grab the vacuum, we're going to suck this out, we're going to pull out the bit, and we're going to take and measure our bore and get a good look down in there before we go to the next one. And again, all we're interested in is a round hole and not to be exceeding our finish size. And how close are we? I got 818. Eight hundred and eighteen and a half. Oh, we're, we're both ways measuring within a half a thousandth there with just two measurements. All right, and we are clean all the way around. There's a little ridge where we didn't take all the way out to our O-ring diameter all the way around. So we are locating those holes pretty darn close. Close enough for my liking and for a swinging suspension on an off-road vehicle. Keeping with the manufacturer's design of center to center and all that good stuff. I think that's pretty close. Alright, let's go on over to our next one. Once we get close, we kind of lock our table. This is an old, this is an older bridge port, and it's got, it's got its, it's got its play. that for center. Double check our locks. We're good. Okay now this is the this is this is the worst out of all the holes. Um, the inside holes are the worst. The outside are fairly true but this is the actual more load bearing and the wear is down here on the lower section I 
I'm trying this one dry instead of adding a Aluma cut. See how it differs. Still a little bit of a fill up on it. I'm trying by hand, so if I can feed it by hand and back it out, come back down with no problem, makes the job a little faster. Alright, I don't like the way that sounds, but we're going to add just a little bit of fluid in there. There we go. Now cutting it dry, only about a thousandths more. I'm like at 819, 819 and a half. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and switch to the other side. pretty extreme it's uh, almost oh I don't know maybe about 10 20 thousand squares on that far side there that's actually but we're able to give it a round hole and that's what's that's what's important pick up that location of the the oil hole or the oil groove was in the major section of the the meat coming off of this upper side over here. personal question I just finished we're all done with this one here as far as making all these holes round all right now they're 
They're uh, 11 16 in diameter and each one of them still has to be opened up to 7 8 diameter and countersink the, the hole. But at least we have all round holes that we can locate in other setups. And what I want to do is we know that that's our location right there for our last hole. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this plug out of here. And we're going to go ahead and lift this one completely off the jig. And then we want to see if it's possible that the next one I put on here, if that hole actually lines up. Uh, just are we, are, are everything jigged up and off of the center bore? Um, that's basically what I think what my question is to myself. My curiosity uh, was wondering that at, at minimum. Okay, and Okay, we got We can't tighten this yet, but we got to move that around so we can. We know that it's going to be within that swing, or at least we hope it is. All right, now we're going to go ahead and just lightly tension our unit here, and it's close, but I can see about forty thousandths over there. Uh, so how close and what their jig actually sets up on these hole locations from this hole not exactly clear that it's exact um, I haven't moved the table or anything but right now I'm going to go ahead and tighten up and set up our, our jig the same way that we did that last one so that we know that we are at least in the same plane and all of that with the rest of the piece here. Okay, now let's get pieces over here. Same thing as we did before, we set up uh, an indicator and we set this at zero. Five thousands preload has been working out real well on being able to tighten back down to zero. check here we don't want we don't want any second guessing here we want to make sure that we are right in there okay and we're ready to go for our second one now our first one we'll be able to set up over into the uh, the drill press for the next operation I think okay um, we are on this is casting number four which is the very first one that we had in the first video and we were looking at this area right over here and that's the closest wear or the most wear but the closest of wiping out the o-ring groove there so that's how much uh, is almost hardly anything off of the side here but uh, full full width over there and that's where the load is against this side over here 
So I just wanted to point that out. We're going to go ahead. We've already got the other side of this. We'll get these two here and we only got two more frames to go. And then we'll be on to the next step. I'm missing two Allen wrenches to so setting up uh, the other casting right away into the, the drill press there. So we're going to wait till I can grab these two uh, Allen heads here. Alright, let's just give you another look at that. And you can see it is taking a cut all the way around, but just barely right there. It was more so a little bit more bell mouth on the edge that kind of gives you that. But that means that it starts rocking. Alright, we're moving into our last bore here. That's we're going to have to do with our two fluid end mill so that we create a straight hole and our little jig here has really done good the last time we swapped from part to part we did have a real real close match from from the center out to the hole in relationship to one casting to the the other casting and the other ones have all been real real close but they have been oh you know, 30, 40 thousandths of an inch difference by eyeball. So, about a millimeter or a 30 second or so. of about <laughs> less than less than a 30 second there for the depth <laughs> anyhow that's it we're we're ready to set up for our next operation <laughs> 